Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. Uh, And we have begun our new church season uh, with the season of Advent. And of course, we celebrated that on Saturday evening and and all day Sunday. Uh, And I thought for the start of this Advent on our first Monday in Advent, I thought we would do a little deviation, which we do occasionally, and talk a little bit about the Saint's Day that is assigned for today. And that is the Feast of Saint Andrew. Now, what is it when you say, Uh, St. Andrew that you most often think about. If you're Scottish, you may have one answer, Uh, but for most people who have done some studying of the Bible, and I hope that includes you and me, right? Uh, One of the things you would notice about St. Andrew is that he's an apostle, and that's certainly true. He is one of the apostles that Jesus Christ calls uh, to be one of the 12 who will ultimately be entrusted with the ministry of the gospel to spread to the world, although, of course, we know Judas uh, betrays him before that really starts. But Andrew is one of the early and the, one of the earliest of them. We hear in one of the gospels that Andrew was heard from John the Baptist when John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and said, "Behold the Lamb of God! Behold him that takes away the sins of the world!" That Andrew went and followed him. We also hear that what Andrew did was he went and got his brother. Right? He went and found Simon Peter and he said, "Hey, uh, we found the Lord." And so, in some ways. Andrew, as, as the book of Lesser Feast and Fast points out, was one of the first evangelist and missionary. Uh, he went and got his brother Simon Peter. Uh, but probably sadly for Andrew, and actually now that he's a saint and he's in heaven, he, he has no regrets, but you know, he is mostly identified in scripture as the brother of Simon Peter, right? And no second born loves to hear that, right? When they go to school and they say, oh, you are so-and-so's little brother, right? They don't, they, no, nobody wants to hear that. Um, being a firstborn, I have a slight advantage on that. But anyway, Simon, it is what Andrew is primarily known for. He does get some mention in historical books afterwards, and it believed that he went to Scythia. And the tradition is that, that Andrew died on the cross. He was crucified as many of the apostles were also crucified. Uh, but that Andrew was crucified on a cross in the form of an X. So, Uh, The reason why I'm standing here, I'm actually standing in the pulpit uh, facing uh, kind of on an angle, uh, so you can see that wonderful crucifix that you can look on when when Father Kelly's preaching his sermons. You can look over my shoulders and be reminded of the pain that Jesus went through, uh, and that is so much more pain than you're going through having to listen to my sermon for 12 or 14 minutes. But uh, behind me also is our uh, part of our heraldry, and that is a flag from the Episcopal Church. And the reason why I wanted to show that to you is because of St. Andrew's Day. You can kind of see my head here, but there's, there's two main features on this cross. There's, there's a, a red cross with a white field. Let me see if I have a better job pulling that out. And then there is a blue field uh, with a series of smaller crosses. That blue field, if you notice, the smaller crosses up here represent each of the original dioceses that formed what we know as the Episcopal Church. Uh, Where did the Episcopal Church come from? Well, the Episcopal Church was the Church of England here in the colonies, right? But the other thing about this blue field for you to notice is that those original uh, colonies, those original churches from each of the colonies which became states or commonwealths, are in the form of an X. Uh, Why is that? Well, because in the history of the Episcopal Church, we have not only our origins in the Church of England, and that red cross with the white field is known as a cross of St. George. Uh, And so St. George, whose feast day is April 23rd, well, 22nd. To look that up, won't we? Anyway, his feast day, St. George is considered one of the patron saints of England. Uh, And so our heraldry includes that red cross on a white field uh, to remember that we have our heritage in the Church of England. Uh, But the blue field with the crosses uh, in an X uh, reminds us also of our connection to the Episcopal Church of Scotland. Uh, And that is because when we formed our new church after the Revolutionary War, uh, the problem was was that all of those priests and bishops had taken an oath of allegiance to the king. And of course, we couldn't do that anymore. And 
the church in England wasn't real keen on giving us bishops, which you need to propagate the apostolic ministry, because these new bishops would not swear an oath of allegiance to the king, as was required by the English prayer book, uh, because they obviously were citizens of this new country. And so, you know, one of the things, if you know a little bit about the relationship, England and Scotland don't always get along. And the, uh, ch the bishops in the Episcopal Church of Scotland uh, were willing to go ahead and to consecrate Samuel Seabury, who was elected the first bishop in Connecticut, really New England at that point, uh, but became the bishop of, of Connecticut, they were more than willing to make him a bishop uh, because uh, England wouldn't. Uh, and so he then, eventually the Church in England, of England was able to revise its statutes to allow for William White and others to be also consecrated, but to consecrate it by the Church of England. And one of the things that we do to honor Scotland's willingness to give us the apostolic ministry, which is so vital to the outlook and to the layout of what the church is about, our gratitude to Scotland for doing that. We have included them in our heraldry, uh, not only the cross of St. George for the Church of England, but the St. Andrew's cross, right? He, St. Andrew was crucified on an X. St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland. And so that we have our crosses on the blue field in an X to remember how St. Andrew gave his life. So there you go. Your morning meditation today is a bit of a history lesson of the Episcopal Church, as well as a thanksgiving to St. Andrew, who we know now doesn't mind that he was always identified as Simon Peter's brother. We know that now because he's in heaven and there's no, you know, no way that you can have uh, resentments uh, while you're in heaven. And we give thanks most importantly because he went and brought people to Jesus. I hope you have a wonderful Monday. May God bless you.